Uh, I, w- I want to talk to you real quick about rejection because uh, a lot of people listen to the show are are kind of in in business just because my other show is tend to be more more business listeners and kind of personal development self development people. Um, I did <clears throat> about five years of door to door sales, and if there's any vocation that I would think would potentially actually be more rejection than what I did, it would have to be acting. Um, and so I, I would I would assume that. Um, getting to the stage of your career that you're at, you've had to learn to some extent how to handle, how to deal with rejection. And I'm curious if you have any kind of advice for anybody out there listening. I would say like door-to-door sales, um, acting, maybe stand-up comedy, uh, real estate to a certain degree, because you don't like, you literally have to, you'll never know what the number is, right? Like you'll never know if like, yeah, you, you have to, go up for 10 different deals and number eight's going to be the one, but you've got to walk through the first seven. Yeah. Um, so you just don't know, but it's, uh, I would just say th- the only way I was able to get over rejection was when I went back to class and I started really looking at where was I, where did I have blind spots? Where was I less than? Cause I think I was giving myself this little emotional safety net, this caveat where I would say, well, if I didn't get the part, it's because I didn't give it all of me. I mm. didn't give it 100%. And had I given it 100%, well, then probably I would have gotten it. Because that's scary, right? It's scary, this idea to give it your all, and then be confronted with this idea of like, yes, you did give it every ounce of you, and it still wasn't enough. But then it's like, but what is life? You know. So it wasn't until I really learned how to do the work felt confident that I was doing everything in my power and that I was just doing my end of the job that I was able to accept like, eh, this one wasn't mine. And still, I've got an audition that's still, that I auditioned for three weeks ago that's like banging around in my head where I'm like, when do I haven't heard back? <laughs> yeah, you, I, I love, I've heard you say, you know, when you take responsibility for your life, it's got a lot of great benefits, but also you don't have anybody else to blame. And I think that's like, such a scary thing because when something, you know, when something works, you can be like, yeah, I just got cast in a Christopher Nolan movie like that, (laughs) you know, like I killed it. But then, like you said, when you have something where, you know, you don't get a call back for three weeks, you know, you're going, well, I can't blame anybody. I can't blame them. I can't blame anybody else. Like that responsibility there is a really scary, but rewarding thing at the same time. You make such a great point. And and I'm thinking now about how, you know, I end the book where I talk about how I had to let go of acting and accept my life as it was, that I was overpaid and I had a wife and a kid and I was so lucky and I was making a living doing social media. It was only in like being able to truly let it go and have that ego death that I could start acting for me for the reasons that I fell in love with it when I was eight. And the book kind of ends where I say, and then of course, once I got to that, that place, I booked this Disney Plus show, Turner and Hooch, and it's like the biggest thing I've gotten in years. And in this doing promotion for the book because I finished that chapter a year ago. People have said, you know, you kind of hint in the book, you say, I just booked this thing. It's the biggest thing that I've had in my career. And by the time it comes out, it could be the biggest thing in the world or canceled or maybe somewhere in the middle. They're like, and the show got canceled. Like, how do you feel about that now? And I said, well, I, I could have changed the ending, right? Like I could have said, well, I got Oppenheimer or, you know, I got a Chris Nolan flick, right. But but like, this is so indicative of my life as an actor in most lives. Like, yes, that got canceled. And then I got this other thing. And then I could spend the next year out of work. Like you just don't know, which was why I didn't want to omit that knowing that people would very publicly know that like, Oh, I was so excited, but it still got super canceled, but it's like, (laughs) but I'm okay. Like the, the important part is that I'm okay. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head when you when you said earlier that it was really came down to your confidence and putting in the work. And I, I, I just I've got to always come back to that because when you're in the face of uncertainty and you're dealing with things that are outside of your control, all you're going to do is drive yourself crazy trying to think about how you can control them. When you went back to the drawing board and just said, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is that I'm going to give this my best shot. I'm going to put in the reps. I'm going to go back to acting class. I'm going to put in the work. And then I'm going to do the things that are required of me. And if it happens at that point, fantastic. If it doesn't happen at that point, also fantastic. Because I 
am in a place where like these external circumstances don't change how I feel about myself on the inside. They don't change how my wife perceives me or the people that are closest to me that actually care about me perceive me. Um, and I think that that's a really, really powerful takeaway.